Ladies and gentlemen, this is Adam Kogos here at the Unconvention in Omaha, Nebraska, with Tyler Denke. He is running for Secretary of State in Wisconsin. And, I don't know if you can tell, like me, he's a chicken farmer. Now, I think he's more of a realtor. I'm, I'm like, I'm super amateur hobbyist. But, Tyler, first, what, tell us about yourself and, and, and how you ended up running for Secretary of State. I've been involved with the Libertarian Party uh, for a few years. I am... Uh, running for Secretary of State because I'm a small business owner, a chicken farmer, and I want to fight crony capitalism. So that's your business. How many chickens do you have? I actually have four. I have I work with 40 farmers across the country, and uh, that that ship directly to our customers. So we have uh, we actually have 700 different kinds of birds that we offer, and and I was really frustrated with the uh, government interference in my business, and um, so I I wanted to get involved in in libertarian politics and to liberate the people and to make it easier to have a business in, in Wisconsin. So how's the government up in your chicken business? Uh, so with with poultry, uh, one of the things that we had was the eastern wild turkeys. Uh, there's quite a few states where it's really difficult for us to have eastern wild turkeys or white mute swans on people's ponds. Um, and I just... It's hard to have them. So like what? It's... Because of the government, you mean it's hard to have, what, 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 what hoops do they make you jump through to have a swan on a pond on your own property? In the state of Wisconsin, you actually have to have, if you want white mute swans, they need to be neutered, or they need to be in fully enclosed pens with a roof and sides. Okay, so, so government in Wisconsin is regulating swan genitalia for your safety as a Wisconsinite. And and there's there's actually several states and it is it's actually a thing. So I I I sold a lot of wild turkey poults, baby turkeys, and um, yes, you don't want captively bred wild turkeys to be released into the wild, but you also the same thing is true for the domestic wild turkeys that you release into the wild. So um, I I was selling a lot of wild turkeys and I was really frustrated with the um, there's a, quite a few different states that don't allow me to sell wild turkeys and and wait, wait because your wild turkeys could get out into the wild yes did, did i mishear that that was actually that's that's definitely what the case is yes so purely poultry is my business where i sell baby chickens for people's backyards and i want to be able to sell eastern wild turkeys and that's really why i got involved and and really it's not just about those two species it's about um, I, I deal with 49 states that uh, have animal health laws and wildlife regulations and, and, it, and, and sales tax and all different things that make it difficult for me to be a business owner. And so I got involved in the libertarian politics because I want to be able to be an employer without government interference. Okay, so why Secretary of State? I'm running for Secretary of State so that um, I, I want there to be um, ballot access in 2020, um, you need to get a certain percentage of the vote of the statewide candidates for, um, so that in 2020 we have ballot access. So you have a pretty onerous uh, signature gathering system that libertarians are facing in Wisconsin? So it's 2,000 signatures, um, which compared to some other states, it's not quite as bad, but 2,000 is, is uh, quite a bit of work too. So um, I'm... Uh, as Secretary of State, I'd like to see smaller government, and uh, one of the things, signature gathering should now be an iPad app. Uh, it, a lot of the things that the um, that the Secretary of State could do could be very much so streamlined with, uh, with technology, and I really think that the... Um, in the Secretary of State's office, it, it really could be something that could be done not as a statewide election, but as a very simple internal p position. So um, I'd, I'd just like to see it be more simplified. Do you have full authority over the election process as Secretary of State? No, not, not full. full authority, obviously, but you, are you the main overseer? Yeah, the, they'd, be the, they'd be the head of the elections. And I'd, I'd like to see instead of when, when you're doing that, it would be great to have it not be one of the two teams that are um, if, if, it, if there's primarily two teams, it would be great to have a candidate that's a third party in that. So, um, 
and and also in um, in our our Secretary of State currently has been there for a really long time, and so I'd like to see um, a fresh face and and some excitement and some new ideas. And so, would you support a blockchain-based voting system? Yeah, absolutely. Um, the blockchain is a, a great uh, has a lot of potential for voting, and I I. I'd love to see us pursue that. Um, I'm pretty passionate about instant runoff voting, and I think that that's a really rich way to um, hear the voice of the people better. And uh, I, I actually ran for local office um, recently, and that could have had an impact in my my election there. So what were you running for? I ran for uh, village board of the village of Fremont in Wisconsin. So I, I was trying to make Fremont more free. And uh, I, um, I, that election happened just before our state convention, and then I got asked to do um, the Secretary of State. And so that was, that was just in the last few weeks here. So, so you mentioned, uh, you know, we got to do a panel earlier today at the convention here about, oh, geez, I can't remember the title, because it was just like, all right, talk about this. And I had it kinda, we kind of had to make it up on the fly, but it was uh, Governance Roadmap something future develop whatever uh geez, i can't even remember now yeah. but yeah it was it was like yeah future of freedom roadmap to to governance governance, ref governance reform roadmap yeah. the grr obviously mm -hmm. how would i f how would i forget a panel name so exciting stuff. but we ended up talking about a lot of really cool stuff about the intersection of of technology and government and one of the things you mentioned was that a lot of the stuff should be done just by app, like that there should be an app for that. And it's almost like blockchain technology is, is like leaping ahead. Like you didn't even need to wait for blockchain for government to take advantage of the internet and, and everything that's capable, that we're capable of with that. What, when, when you see that, that government is capable of hosting fully transparent, free, accountable elections that are fair and open, and there are very easy technological ways of achieving that, more efficient than what they're doing now, what does it tell you when they choose not to do that and stick with this old system that allows them to they're they're really trying to keep their own old systems and their old teams and their old they're they're really trying to be um favoring themselves and their their two party system very much so and i I'd, I'd like to see us make sure that we're having ballots with more options and um, trying new things. So they're never going to let you win. Because <laughs> there's a, the, the reason they, I mean, they, they keep all that in place to make it harder for anybody to challenge their power. Yeah. So w are, you, are you able to, to use this race to, to have a positive impact, at least get out, spread a message, have some fun with it, and, and show people this, this, this possibility that, that if you were able to win a Secretary of State, that it would have uh, you know major impact on everything pervasively throughout the state of Wisconsin. I've uh, very much so witnessed a lot of support uh, from uh, libertarians in Wisconsin. Uh, I've noticed that they're really uh, working on making this a prosperous race for us, and uh, they're. Uh, I really want to thank the people who are out there gathering signatures for me, so that I could come here today to be in Omaha. And um, I, I actually, while I was here, I actually got to speak about holacracy, which is a cool new governance system that um, I'm really passionate about. So, um, you want to describe that super quick? Yeah. So holacracy is a different uh, operating system for organizations, and it's a way to structure an organization so that you use the strengths of all of the people in the organization, so that you're not. Um, you're, you're, it's not a top-down, it's very much so where people are able to make their own decisions in the work that they do, and I think that's a great way to structure voluntary associations. And how do people look that up? How is it spelled? Is it H-E-L-ocracy? <laughs> Hola, H-O-L-A-C-R-A-C-Y dot org, Holacracy. Okay. Um, really f fantastic system that, um, a really great book, go, go read about it, Holacracy. And this is a really good point because like when I, we were talking about this earlier, I, I was saying, is this you know, a, a system of governance? And it's like, no, it's a system of social organization. And it really speaks to making government obsolete. Instead of looking for a way to have a system of governance that's fairer or freer or more just, because that might be impossible, create a system that is inclusive of all 
endeavors of human organization that provides a better way that then makes the government system seem silly. So, Tyler, it was a lot of fun talking with you earlier today and just now. Do you have a website you want to plug? Um, I'm still working on my website for my campaign. Um, my, um, I have my poultry website, purelypoultry.com. And you have contact info there for if you want to get the, I, I love that, purelypoultry.com. He just wanted to put baby wild turkeys in, in, into the economy. He just, wanted, he just wanted to sell baby wild turkeys, and you didn't let him. You, did, you, you could have had it easy. Now he's going to take down your whole goddamn two-party system. Tyler Danke, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you to YouTube for hosting this video and for being an essential part of human progress by making video hosting available worldwide to everyone on the internet. However, the next phase in human progress is here with Steemit.com and their video hosting alternative blockchain-based solutions, including DTube. And you can find that through Steemit.com as well as my own page there, at Adam Kokesh. This is a decentralized blockchain-based social media network that pays you fairly for your content. Already, I'm regularly making more there with a single post than I do from an entire month on YouTube. So please join us on the next frontier of the information revolution at steamit.com. And if you want help getting a leg up there, I'm happy to re-steam your posts and make sure that no one is starting from scratch. Just email me one of your favorite posts at adam at and we'll share it on my feed.